um, and we went through um, some of the, the issues that people were having. Um, it's uh, essentially about how people don't necessarily, aren't able to represent themselves um, particularly well because of lack of training of um, finance officers, lack of being given the right information and support to identify disability related expenses, um, not knowing um, to refer uh, finance officers back to section 8 of the um, uh, Care Act statutory guidance, the key principles there which include um, leaving people with enough money for social inclusion and well-being um, but also one of the, the a really fantastic recommendation came out um, which was to, to compile a list of um, disability related expenditure so what people had had as, as allowed as disability related expenditure and in what circumstances to build up a, um, a crowd shared resource that people can then look at and say well okay if that person's been able to use um, to have that allowed in that, that circumstance, that's something that I can also um, uh, suggest as a disability related expense. Yeah, it's a fantastic, practical, tangible action that we love. Um, great. Um, next. Recruit and re keep our staff. Um, there were some really some stories about what really happened, how it's hard basically to keep a relationship going with your peers if, if, they, uh, if they're really worried about their jobs and you're wondering whether you can build a relationship. And so that was uh, what we, we were talking about was basically getting a space and time to allow people to, to develop the, the ideas of how you do this and that kind of thing. I don't yeah, I mean, some of the barriers that people talked about was, for example, uh, local authorities not being prepared to make an increase to your direct payment when the national minimum wage goes up, or for pensions. In Northamptonshire, actually, the uh, local, the county council there, it's covering the pension. That wouldn't care for money, county council there, money. <laughs> well, one good thing that Northamptonshire have done is they're covering the um, the cost of pensions, but that is tied to using the in-house payroll service. Um, yeah, recruitment, lots of people are having different kinds of, of problems there, whether it's lack of interest from people or too many unsuitable applications coming from people because the job centre's told them that they'll be sanctioned if they don't apply. Um, so people are either finding they've got no one to cover the hours that they're actually getting funded for or having too many applications. And then in terms of solutions, people were talking about the need to create a broader understanding of what personal assistance actually is and for it to become, for it to be profiled as a valuable profession. The main points, we'll type in, up our workshop. I would say it's worth, worth fund, fundraising in the, in the country at the moment. So in terms of solutions, there was a number of really kind of clear um, ideas. Firstly, it's about absolutely, if we're going to be lobbying for any kind of independent living service framework set of policies, that then we want, stat we want it to become a statutory duty to fund DDPOs to provide independent advice and advocacy um, so that that funding is, is secure and we can start getting the support we need to go through these processes. That was one key thing. Another key thing was how do we build our peer support, the support that we offer each other, whether that's skill sharing, knowledge sharing, experience sharing. And that could be physically getting together a kind of peer support group. It could be online, it could be resources. Um, so there's more work to be done there. And that definitely did echo what came out of the National People, Disabled People Summit couple of weeks ago. There's also about developing 
our own definition of independent living or being really clear about how we communicate that so it's not bastardised and turned upside down as it is currently being, um, being interpreted by um, kind of government policy. So how, how, do we, how do we create a compelling uh, description and definition of independent living that can, you know, uh, create allies and, and advocates? And there's something about just developing our resources um, about our rights, because knowing our rights is absolutely key as well. Can I say, we've also said in that one, but um, we should redesign the, you know, the, 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 the Anti-Discrimination Act. Redesign the an anti... Uh, Redesign the anti-agenda. Right. Do our own one. Nobody. I don't know what people feel about that. Yeah. Yeah. Starting from yeah. scratch again with the Equality Act. It took us about 18 goes to get the other one. <laughs> well, we've got, well, we've got holes in it. Well, we've got holes in it, today. It's definitely got holes in it, and it doesn't address kind of independent exactly. living, and lots of it's not enforceable. So I think we definitely have to learn from the Equality Act if we're going to be lobbying for independent living legislation. Models um, of employment gains that exist in countries like Sweden and Norway, and the potential applicability of something like that to the UK. Um, and I think there were various different viewpoints on that. I think some people probably felt that anything other than individuals directly employing their PAs could have a loss of choice and control. Um, there was also some discussion of a local and national scale, uh, and I think um, there was a suggestion also that a national body that employs all PAs um, could, be, um, could be an option. Um, and sort of how, how the role of the, of the, the co-ops in Sweden and Norway is similar and different to that of um, Centres for Independent Living and other DPOs. Um, Ella, do you want to add anything? Um, I, think, I think people had... I think the thing that people are saying is that you need funding, whatever model you have, the funding has yeah. to be in place, and that's the priority and what is needed. Um, how what? What they could provide is um, options for people who don't want to have to carry all the responsibilities of employing someone. So that's and the administrative uh. burden and the keeping up with legislation. So I think there was interest in exploring different models that could take over those responsibilities for people and reduce the risk. Um, also uh, help with recruitment. Um, because the current model, you'd have a pool of, of PAs, uh, whereas individuals are finding it difficult to recruit. So I think people are interested in continuing to look at different options for managing direct payments, but the priority for everyone is to fight for funding. 